Let's take it back to the old school and have a look at VOR navigation by doing a departure procedure using it. I could tell you that VOR practice is good for you and develops your situational awareness or something along those lines, but really, I think it's just fun. I also like manual transmission cars and watches you have to wind every few days, so maybe it's just me. You can really become a VOR expert by going through our Flight Insight IFR Ground School, which covers this type of navigation and so much more. Check the link here or in the description. Let's get started. We're in Fairbanks, Alaska at the hold short for runway 2 left on a crummy day. We're not going to simulate the air traffic control for this flight, just the navigation piece. We're going to fly the Galena 8 departure. Here's the plate. Let's brief the procedure. First, the takeoff mins. For runway 2 left, they're standard, meaning 1 mile visibility. We need a climb rate of 230 feet per nautical mile up through 2,200 feet. Not a problem in the Cessna. Let's say our assigned altitude is 8,000 feet for this flight. For runway 2 left, the route description is to climb on heading 038. Of course, on takeoff, we'll maintain runway heading until we reach 400 feet above the departure end and then make our turn to 038. Then, after passing 2200 feet, we'll make a big left turn, heading direct to the Fairbanks VOR. Let's set that up in Nav 1 on our Garmin 530. We'll push the cursor to flip to the VLOC frequencies, then dial in 108.6 for Fairbanks. We'll flip that to the active frequency. The unit IDs the station for us, identifier Foxtrot Alpha India. We'll push VLOC to switch over to picking up the VOR. We'll be flying direct. From the chart, we can see that'll be about a 210 degree heading, so we'll dial that into the OBS and can zero in when we're airborne. When we're over the Fairbanks VOR, we make a right turn to track the 242 radial outbound. That five letter intersection we're going towards, CFBWL, is known as a computer navigation fix. It's used for performance based navigation operations. So if we were using our GPS, it would be an additional point of reference, but we don't need to take note of it using just VORs. We're going to be intercepting the 255 radial off a second VOR, Nanana 115.8. So let's punch that into our nav too. We'll flip it active and hit VLOC. We could twist the OBS to set the radial 255 into that. The 430 unit doesn't ID the station for us, so we do that by turning on receive mode on nav 2 and listening for the Morse code. Realistically, we probably wouldn't pick up a distant station like this from the ground, but in the sim it works. Now, this procedure tells us DME is required. We'll use our GPS in lieu of that. We can go to the nearest page and then scroll over to the nearest VOR and we see distance information for Fairbanks as well as the other stations. We'll pull up the same screen on the 430. To make life easier, we'll set our heading bug to our first heading on the procedure, 038 degrees. We'll put the altimeter setting in and it reads the field elevation of about 450. Our first turnout at 400 AGL will be about 850 on the altimeter then. We get our takeoff clearance and start out. It's a nasty day, so we're quickly in instrument conditions. We're on runway heading, 021 degrees at first. At 400 AGL, we're going to start our right standard rate turn to 038 degrees. It might be around this time that we would get handed off to departure. We're going to climb on this heading to 2200, at which point we'll continue the climb, making a left turn around. We want to track inbound of the Fairbanks VOR we had programmed on Nav 1. We twist the OBS to center the needle with a 2 indication. It shouldn't need to be corrected much since we made that estimate of 210 on the ground prior to departing. Now it shows about 225, so we fly that heading and correct for it as we roll out. Let's set the heading bug there to keep track. Very quickly, we notice the needle swinging to the right. We're not far from the station, only about 6 miles, so it's rather sensitive. Even though our heading matches the OBS setting, the wind is pushing us off track. The needle is to the right, so we need to correct to the right. The wind is coming from our right, out of the west or northwest it would seem. Goal prior to overflying the station is to determine a wind correction that will keep that needle from deviating. We appear to find it at around 230 on the directional gyro. In order to recenter the needle, we'll need to fly to the right of that, and then resume 230, which gives us our needed wind correction. We won't try too hard to keep it centered as we fly over. When the flag flips, we make a right turn to track outbound on the 242 radial. We'll twist the OBS to that setting. We still need a bit of a wind correction to the right, and we'll go through the same exercise of experimenting with exactly what that needs to be. Just remember when you're flying with VORs to make small corrections, infrequently, 
checking the result after a few seconds or even a half of a minute before you make another correction. It looks like we're able to correct slowly from that left deviation with a heading about 250. When the needle centers, we'll fly a bit right of that and it should freeze there. We're leveled off a cruise of 8,000 feet now. What we're looking for is the needle on the NAV2 to come alive. That'll show that we're approaching the 255 radial off the Nanana VOR, which will run a track outbound. After flying along a bit, working to keep the needle centered on the NAV1, we see the NAV2 jump alive. As it approaches center, we can make a right turn to track along it. Let's put this VOR into the NAV1 now. We don't need Fairbanks VOR anymore. 115.8 goes into NAV1, and we flip it active, twisting the OBS to the required radial of 255. We're going to be flying this leg to the Galena VOR, so let's set that up on standby 114.8. We'll also put it in NAV2 and flip it to active. The radial we'll be tracking inbound to Galena is 077, which is the same airway we're on now, just a slightly different track due to the curve of the Earth and magnetic variation in the faraway station. Let's put 077 in the OBS. It needs to go on the bottom. We're tracking inbound, meaning we're not going to fly 077 degrees, but it's reciprocal, which is on top. Just remember that the heading we're flying and the OBS setting on top should roughly agree. Finally, we're going to switch from using the Nanana VOR to the Galena at the changeover point, 124 miles from Nanana or 75 miles from Galena. So we're en route, having completed the VOR procedure. Again, VORs are a great way to stay sharp, and if you need to bone up on them or any other aspect of your instrument flying, check out our full IFR ground school today at the link here or in the description. See you there.